Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, I got a little uh, project coming up actually in a few weeks. It's going to require some face milling over on the horizontal milling machine. And uh, a while back, I picked up a couple of new face mills. And what I'm going to try to do here is get one of these mounted up and set up, hopefully get all the teeth uh, oriented where they're, they're all even and cutting even. And I've got inserts in these. Uh, I'm probably going to switch them around to a better face on these inserts as well while we're doing it. Just kind of getting things ready. This is something I've been needing to do for a while and just haven't had time to do it. But with this job coming up, it's a good excuse to get out here and get it done. Uh, I've got one 50 taper uh, arbor here that's made to, to, for putting a face mill on of this size. This is an inch and a half diameter. I've only got one of these. I've got two face mills, so I really need to try to round up one of these. I guess I'm going to get on eBay and see if I can uh, score me one to get coming in here because I'd really like to just go ahead and get both of these set up. But for today, we're just going to get one of them going and I'll get the other one set up at a later date. Let me zoom you in here and show you these heads and kind of show you what we're going to be doing. So these are the two face mills that I'm working with here. And both of these I acquired, I guess it was back last spring from an auction that was being conducted by Boeing up in Macon, Georgia. They had a lot of tooling and I bid on the lot and won the lot. And a lot of the stuff in there I really couldn't use, but there were some things in there I could. And, and these face mills were two of the things that I was really wanting to get out of that, that uh, auction. And I was uh, happy when I, I did actually win it. So both of these, uh, let's see, this is a Sandvik Cornumet module mill. This one here, same thing, uh, they're both, both made by Sandvik. They're both very similar uh, mills, our face mills actually, but they're set up for different types of inserts. So uh, as you can see, this one here has a round insert on it, whereas this one here has a square insert on it that's kind of turned up at an angle so you have a, a high spot. Now, I'm going to be machining cast iron and I've, you know, I really kind of like these round inserts on cast iron, but I think I'm going to today, I'm going to go ahead and get this one set up, mainly because it's just got more teeth in there, it's going to be making more cuts, and I really kind of like that point that's going in there on rather than a real wide face, so uh, for the job I'm going to be doing this time anyway. So I think the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to take these over to the parts washer and get them cleaned up really well because there is some dirt, grime, grease, both on the, the actual uh, holder for it as well as the face mill itself, and then we'll start putting these together. These cleaned up real nice over in the parts washer, and I think we're ready to go ahead and try to put them together. So this is inch and a half. Uh, we've got inch and a half shank, and there's kind of two drive dogs in here that drive this thing. On the back, you see you got the exact opposite of that. Uh, we're, we got that inch and a half bore, and we got some slots for those uh, drivers to go into. So this should just come right down over here. It's probably gonna be a little tight. All right, that's right on there. And then there's a nut here that goes down the middle and holds it all together. Now I'm gonna have to figure out something to tighten this thing up with. It looks like that's made for a specific tool to go down in there to tighten that. I don't have that specific tool, so we're gonna have to get creative. See if we can figure something out. I've just got this on here finger tight right now. I'm going to tighten it once we get it onto the mill because I need something to hold it and this is the perfect holder. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and wipe this down. Anytime we're doing this, I always do that. Now, if you're not familiar with a 50 taper, this is a taper here and in the back of this is just a threaded hole and in the milling machine you have what's called a draw bar, uh, which is right here. It goes through the spindle it threads into that and basically it just tightens it and squeezes it together, pulls that taper up into the socket here and that's what holds it in place. So um, I'm going to go ahead and get in here and always try to make sure I wipe these tapers out just to make sure there's no trash or anything in there. Um, if you do, it can scar this up and actually affect the precision of the machine. So. Even if I take something out and put something right back in, I still just make sure I wipe it just to be on the safe side. 
So let me go ahead, we'll put this in. I'll tighten up my threads in the back and let me get a wrench and I'll cinch that down. All right, that should be plenty tight there. Well guys, I still gotta get this tight in here and I don't have the right tool. I've, I've looked around the shop trying to come up with what I can do and for right now, I'm just gonna cheat and I don't recommend doing this under normal circumstances, but sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do. I'm gonna take a punch and a hammer and that should be fine. Now, it looks like somebody's already done that up on this corner to take it off. I'm gonna have to either find or make the right tool for this at some point in time, but for right now, I just need to get it done. So what I'm doing now is I wanna to try to get an idea for how these inserts are currently set in here. And I wanna see if there's any variation from one to the other. I suspect there probably is, and I also know that these inserts are worn faces, so they're probably not all even anyway. I'm just trying to get an idea here. So what I'm gonna do is I've, I've got on here a tip that's kind of a ball shape on it so that it will roll up over these cutters as they come around. And I've got my zero kind of set about where zero is gonna be. That one was about four thousandths above. Well, I thought I had it set on zero. All right, well that one's zero. See, they're not all uniform. That one's about a yeah, that one's right on zero. That one's about a thou below. About right on or right at a thou. Anyway, I'm just kind of seeing. So I already know, just looking at this, that I've got about five thousandths, variance from one tooth to the other right now. I honestly am hoping that I can do better than that. Uh, but really and truly, that, that may not be bad for the machining that we're gonna do. So I do wanna go ahead and turn all these inserts. So I think what I'm gonna do right now is we're just gonna take the indicator out of the way and we're gonna flip these around. These are used inserts, but it looks like they have a good face on it, at least one good face on most of the inserts. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, try to get a nice clean cutting edge to work off of. Let's move this indicator. All right, we're ready to start here. And I looked on here, each one of these cutters is numbered. It's one through 10. So there's 10 inserts in this head. And I'm gonna start with number one. This will just kind of help me keep things straight. This uses a 5 30 seconds Allen wrench. I come in here, it pulls the wedge up, and I'm gonna pull the insert out. And we're gonna inspect the insert and look and see if we have a good face. Now it looks like, I think this edge here is unused, but before I put it in there, I'm gonna take a little screwdriver I have here and I'm just gonna kinda go in here. I can see there's some chips and trash down in here. And I just wanna try to make sure we're getting it cleaned out as good as we can. Cause even just a little chip or something behind that where that seats down in here, can affect how well this insert's gonna zero out. So I'll put the zero, or put the insert back in. I'm putting some backwards pressure on it, downwards pressure on it, and we tighten it back up. And we'll go to number two. Same process. Yeah, there's some trash back there behind that one, a little chip. And that's, hopefully that's going to pull another one out. That's hopefully going to take care of that little bit of variability that we're seeing. At least that's my hope. I'm looking at the insert, trying to find a good, clean, the best corner to use. And it looks like these are have one edge that has not been used, uh, which is gonna be fine. I need to figure out which insert this is and get some more ordered. You know, we're just gonna roll around here and do that to each one. I'll bring you back at the end. I've gone around and I've turned each one of the inserts and found the best face, best corner that I could. 
Uh, I was thinking that they all had one good corner on them. Quite honestly, there were a few of them that did not have an unused corner on them. So on those, I just picked the best corner I could find, the one that looked like it had the least wear in it. Because of that, I know that as I go through here, I'm probably gonna have a few that are a little bit lower than the others because a fresh cutter should be a little bit higher. My goal here, you know, isn't necessarily to make sure each and every tooth is cutting accurately to within a 10 thousandth of an inch. That's not my goal at all. Each one of these teeth is gonna be cutting, but I wanna make sure that I don't have one tooth that's just really a lot higher than the others or really any, any couple of teeth. I want them to all to be within, you know, realistically a couple of thousandths of each other, and I'm gonna get a nice finish. I know that the job that I'm doing once I get through is going to the surface grinder, so, uh, it, you know, even if it is a little bit of a rough finish, it's not the end of the world, but obviously we want to get the best finish we can. So let's uh, go around and see what we've got. Uh, I'm starting on basically number 10 and we'll go around to number one. And I've got this set. I haven't checked all of them. I've checked most of them. I got my zero kind of set an average of what I was seeing on the ones I tested. And we're going to be kind of looking as whether it's above or below that or right on it. And again, if I'm within a couple of thousandths, I think I'm in pretty good shape here. All right, let's roll it around and see where we're at. So that one came in, that one's about four thousandths lower than what I have set as zero. That one's about three thousandths low. That one looked like it was about two, about two, one, One, about two, two, one, and let's see, this will be the last one, one. So I had my zero was off just a little bit. But they're all, if I think I'm right here, let's see, that this next one was the lowest one, I think. And that one's about four, so really it's about 3,000 slow. I'm not too worried about that. All that's going to mean is that cutter there isn't taking as much off. Most of them are hitting around that one to 2,000 slow there. And so again, really minus one, which should be zero here. I'm not going to try to move it. But all the teeth are within 3,000 right now. I'm pretty happy with that. I think that's going to be just fine. Some of these face mills that you find actually have a second screw adjustment in here where you can actually adjust the height. Uh, if these will do that, I haven't figured out how to do it. I don't see any other adjustments in here. But again, I think it's going to be fine for what we're going to be using it for. I think it's all set up. Well, there you go, guys. I know that was kind of quick and dirty, but this is a process you need to do from time to time. I think I'm going to go ahead and get my books out and try to figure out exactly which insert I'm dealing with here. I may just go ahead and order some new inserts so that when I get ready to do this job, I'll have good fresh inserts. And honestly, I think some of that variability we're seeing from tooth to tooth is just because I don't have fresh corners on all of them. We got some in there that have some wear and that's to be expected when you have wear in your teeth. They're not gonna always wear perfectly evenly. And the way that I've done these is I've turned them around to find the best face. And the best face on there may have been from, you know, the, the faces on here now that we're reusing may be from different jobs or different settings. So they probably wouldn't have worn evenly at all. So anyway, I think we're ready to go. This is gonna work just fine. I'm confident that this carbide's sharp enough to cut what I'm gonna be doing, which is gonna be some cast iron. Uh, but it would be nice to get some good inserts. So let me see if I can get some source. Well, that's going to be a wrap on this one. We're going to be cutting some metal hopefully real soon. I've been really busy. I've, I've mentioned this in, in a lot of my videos. My job's had me on the road for really since the first of the year. So the last little over two, about two and a half months, it's just been nonstop travel. I haven't been home very much at all. And it's hard for me to get out and work in the shop when I'm not home. And even on weekends when I am home, a lot of times we have other things going on and other responsibilities since I was gone all week. So point there is, is that it's about to wrap up my busy season. I'm about to be back home. I'm about to have time where I can get out here in the evenings and do stuff in the shop. I'm really looking forward to that. And we got some metal cutting that we're gonna be doing with this setup here very soon. So with that, we'll talk to you guys later. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.